Hello, my name is Kushnyoro Kumadzenaiga Zasana. I am a teacher of English and today the theme of the lecture is word building. The plan of the lecture is the concept of word formation or word building, major types of word formation. The lecture will be divided into two parts. In the first part um, we will uh, consider two major types of word formation, that is uh, affixation and uh, composition. And in the second part we will consider um, conversion and uh, abbreviation. Word formation. As you see on the slide, uh, word formation can be of two types. Uh, when we combine roots and uh, affixal morphemes and uh, without any outward means of word formation. When we combine roots and affixal morphemes, uh, there are two major types of word formation. They are affixation and composition. And when uh, we do not use any outward means of word formation, these two types are called conversion uh, and uh, semantic derivation. Word building is producing new words from the resources of the particular language. It is one of the main ways of enriching and enlarging the vocabulary. There are two major groups of word formation. The first is words formed as grammatical syntagmas, combinations of full linguistic signs. Types, uh, compounding, prefixation, suffixation, conversion and back derivation. And also what, words which are not grammatical uh, syntagmas, uh, which are not made up of full linguistic signs. These are expressive symbolism, blending, clipping, rhyme and some others. Uh, as I have already uh, mentioned, the four main ways of uh, word building are affixation, composition, conversion and abbreviation. The secondary ways are sound interchange, stress interchange, sound imitation, blends and back formation. But in this lecture we will consider only major ways of word formation. The first is affixation. Affixation is adding an affix to the stem of a definite part of speech. Affixation uh, has two subtypes. They are suffixation and prefixation. <coughs> suffixation that is uh, the formation of the word with the help of a suffix. For example, teach is a verb and teach is a noun and the noun was formed with the help of the suffix er. There are different classifications of suffixes. The first is uh, part of speech classifications. So suffixes which can form different parts of speech. For example, the first noun forming suffixes such as er, dom, uh, ISM, for example, criticizer, official dom, and so on. The next is adjective forming suffixes, such as able, less, OUS, for example, breathable, symptomless, and so on. The next group is uh, verb forming suffixes, uh, such as IZE, IFI, uh, for example, computerize. Next is Adverb forming suffixes such as ly, word, for example, uh, singly and table word. Next is numeral forming suffixes such as teen and ty. The next classification of suffixes is semantic classification. Uh, suffixes changing the lexical meaning of the stem can be subdivided into groups. The first is the agent of the so the nouns forming suffixes that denote the agent of the action. For example, suffixes er, ist, like experiment, uh, taxist, or suffix ent, like student. The next noun forming suffixes uh, that denote nationality. For example, suffixes inn, Russian, ese, Japanese, ish, English. The next is a nouns forming suffixes that denote collectivity. For example, dom, ry, ship, like readership. Peasant tree. Next is noun forming suffixes that denote diminutiveness, i.e., like horsey, lead, booklet. Next is quality. So, noun forming suffixes uh, that denote quality. Suffixes ness, ity, like copelessness, answerability. answerability. Next is um, next classifications. Uh, it's lexical grammatical. Uh, uh, next classification is based on the lexical grammatical character of the stem. So we have several groups. The first is suffixes added to verbal stems. 
The second is suffixes added to noun stems and the last is suffixes added to adjective stems. The examples you can see on the slide. Next is origin of suffixes. Here we can point out the following groups. They are native or Germanic suffixes, Romanic, Greek and Russian. Again, the example of suffixes you can see on the slide. New word in modern English as well. Semi-productive, uh, these are suffixes which are less productive, but they still can be used to make a new word. And non-productive, these are maybe borrowed or um, old English suffixes which are not used to make new words. All the examples you can see on the slide. Suffixes can be polysemantic. So it means that one suffix can have several meanings. For example, uh, the suffix er. It denotes agent, doer of the action expressed by the stem. For example, speaker. Also, it denotes profession or occupation. For example, teacher. And also, it denotes a device or a tool. For example, transmitter. Uh, there are also uh, compound suffixes. For example, uh, a able, able, action, terribly, reasonably, adaptation, from adapt. Semi suffixes. They are called semi suffixes because by some scientists they are regarded as suffixes, but the other scientists they are regarded as um, ro uh, roots or stems. For example, burger, cheeseburger, workaholic. So some scientists say that cheeseburger, cheese and burger, these are two stems, but the others say that burger uh, is a suffix. Prefixation. It's another type of affixation. Prefixation, that's when a new word is formed with the help of prefix. A recent research showed that about 25 prefixes in modern English form one part of speech from another, like be button, Interfamily, post college. Prefixes can be classified according to different principles. The first is semantic classification. According to this principle, prefixes can be of negative meaning, uh, prefixes uh, denoting repetition or re reversal actions, and prefixes denoting time, space, degree, relations. The examples of prefixes and uh, some words uh, formed with these prefixes are on the slide. Uh, next is prefixes can be classified according to their origin. They are divided into native, Romanic and Greek. Again, you can see the examples on the slide. Next classification is based on the nature of words in which they are used. So prefixes uh, can be the ones used in notional words and prefixes used in functional words. Prefixes used in notional words are proper prefixes and uh, the, which are bound morphemes. And also prefixes used in functional words, they are semi-bound morphemes because they are met in the language as words, like overhead. Uh, uh, pseudomorphemes. So, as we know, there are a lot of uh, borrowed words in English and very often uh, borrowed words uh, get, get assimilated in the English and then uh, some prefixes of the borrowed words we consider as morphemes, but they uh, are morphemes in the original language but not in English. For example, adverb, accompany, so these prefixes, they do not uh, create new words in modern English, they, uh, they are pseudo morphemes. Also examples like contain, retain, detain, conceive, receive, deceive. The same. Composition is joining two or more stems to form one word. Uh, there are some characteristic features of compound words. They are, first is the unity of stress, uh, they are solid or hyphenated spelling and semantic unity and unity of morphological and syntactical functioning. There are two characteristic features of English compounds. First, both components in an in English compound are free stems. That, is, uh, that uh, means that they can be used as words with a distinctive meaning of their own. And the second, uh, the comp English compounds have a two-stem pattern with the exception of compound words, which uh, have form word stems in their structure. Classification of English compounds. The first is according to the part of speech compounds, uh, they are divided into nouns, uh, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, prepositions and numerals. All the examples you can see on the slide. Next is classification according to the way components are joined together and they are divided into neutral, morphological and syntactical. So neutral uh, compounds uh, are the compounds which are formed by joining together two stems without any joining morpheme, like ballpoint or window shop. 
morphological compounds where components are joined by a linking element like vowels O or I or the consonants S, for example. Ostrospace, handicraft, sportsman. And the uh, last one, syntactical, these are the compounds where the components are joined by means of form word stems. Next is according to the structure, compounds are subdivided into compound words proper with, which consist of two stems, then derivational compounds where uh, beside the stems we have affixes, uh, third is compound words consisting of three or more stems, and the last is compound shortened words. All the examples you can see on the slide. Next is according uh, classification according to the relation between the components. So they can be subordinative compounds and uh, they uh, subordinative compounds are subdivided into with comparative relations, with limiting relations, with emphatic relations, with adjective relations, with cause relations, with space relations, with time relations, with subjective relations and uh, coordinative compounds as well, but they are not on the slide. They are on this slide. Uh, coordinative compounds. So one person has two functions. One person object has two functions, like secretary, stenographer, warm, woman doctor. Also we have compounds formed by means of reduplication and reduplication combined with sound interchange. Another is according to the order of the compounds. The first group compounds with direct order and the second is compounds with indirect order. Now we will continue with uh, discussing uh, word building and in this part we are going to consider uh, two more major types of word formation. They, they are conversion and abbreviation. So the first is conversion. Conversion is affixless derivation or zero suffixation. On the slide you can see also some other definitions of conversion. Usually verbs are formed from nouns and uh, when they are formed from nouns they have uh, different meanings. On the slide you can see some of the options like uh, instrumental meaning, um, living being, addition, acquisition, deprivation and so on. So um, because of the fact that um, English words are polysemantic, uh, lots of the uh, nouns have usually verbs as well. For example if we take uh, the any noun like water, you can say to water, you can say color to color, milk to milk, and so on. Uh, also, it is possible to form nouns uh, by means of conversion from verbs. For example, to jump a jump, to move a move, uh, to help a help, and so on. And they can also denote uh, different things. On the slide you can see the groups, the subdivisions. Partial conversion. Many nouns converted from verbs can be used only in singular form and denote momentous actions. For example, to have a try, to give a push, to take a swim. So this is called a partial conversion. Uh, one more subtype of conversion, you can say, it is a substantivization of adjectives. Uh, let's consider that ex example. For example, um, what uh, phrase grown-up person? Uh, before we used uh, two words to describe an adult person, an adult. But now just grown up is enough to say and it will mean uh, and it will mean uh, grown uh, an adult person. So uh, in this example we see that uh, the, the, there was a case of ellipsis, a case of ellipsis. And now we just use only grown up, but before it used to um, act or to function as an adjective. More examples, a criminal, criminals, and so on. Uh, there are also two types of aptly substantivized adjectives. Uh, first, those which have only the plural form and have the meaning of collective nouns like sweets, news, uh, finals, greens. And the other group, those which have only the singular form and are used with the different article. They also have the meaning of collective nouns and denote a class, a nationality, a group of people. The rich, the English, the dead. One more kind of uh, conversion is stonewall combinations. Uh, stonewall combinations is the combination which consists of two nouns, but um, one of the nouns uh, acts as an adjective. For example, price rise, 
weight freeze, steel helmet. So price rise. In this what combination? Price is a noun, but uh, in the particular uh, phrase which I have just mentioned, it is a, it functions as an adjective. So next slide you can see point of view proved by Yespersenov. So just look through, it's one of the opinions of a scientist. Uh, this next slide you can also see some more opinions of some. Next is uh, Chapnik, he classified them into some, um, some other groups. Next is abbreviation. Or another word is shortening. They can be the causes of shortening, um, they can be linguistic and extra-linguistic. Linguistic. When borrowing from other language are assimilated in English, uh, they are shortened. So, linguistic means related to the language. For example, letting borrowing phoneticus, it is shortened to fan. Extra linguistic. As we know, in mo the, most of the words in English are one syllable words. That's why when we um, have borrowed words and they are long, they are usually assimilated and shortened. So abbreviations of shortenings can be graphical and lexical. Graphical abbreviations are the result of shortening of words and word groups only in written speech, uh, while orally the corresponding full forms are used. They are used for the economy of space and effort in writing. For example, uh, e.g. Latin shortening am, pm, and so on. Some graphical abbreviations of Latin origin have different English equivalents in different contexts, like PM can be in the afternoon or it can be after death. There are several semantic groups of them and you can see them on the slide. The reading of some graphical abbreviations depends on the context. M can be read as male, married, masculine, LP can be read as lone playing and low pressure. So to understand which one is the correct, you need the context. Next uh, are initial abbreviations or they are also called initialisms. Uh, a term formed from the initial letters or letters of several words or parts of words by which it is itself pronounced letter by letter, like BBC. The full name is British Broadcasting Corporation. There are three types of initialism in English. The first is initialism with alphabetical reading, like UK, BUP. The second is initialism which are read as if they are words, like UNESCO, UNA, NATO. And the next one, initialism which co coincide with English words in their sound form, sound initialisms. Uh, such sound initialisms are called acronyms, like CLASS, Computer-Based Laboratory for Automated School System. Some initialism can form new words in which they act as root morphemes by different ways of word building. So you can see the examples on the slide. Some more types of abbreviations. You can see on the slide. Again, some more types. As I have already spoke about uh, two major types, graphical and lexical. Lexical abbreviations are classified according to the part uh, of the word which is clipped. Uh, you can see the types on the slide. Aposcope. Uh, Ephoresis and sinkhole.